investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. On this Thursday, the 22nd of September, we're looking at uh, the Dow uh, minus 123 at 30,057. So within the context of millennium levels, that's 1,000 points, I always consider that it is both a physical and a psychological moment because fund managers tend to rem remember horizontal very well. In other words, um, breaking into the uh, 34,000s and then going 35 and 36 and then just missing the 37,000 as an all-time high because the high in January was 36,952 in the Dow. These are, these are just numbers that people kind of lock on, it's easy to do, it's very different to a horizontal line saying, oh, the trend line at 29,568 in January of 2020 was hit exactly in the Chapman Wave inside track when it went to, uh, the on that was the fifth of the month of 2021, so we go to May, we go to 35,091. Well, if you do a horizontal, you know that the next move up in the trend line resistance is going to be 35,600. It just doesn't work that way. But numbers, uh, as I say, horizontal numbers, especially the ones in the millennium level, those are easy to remember. So we are now a little, just a little bit off. The low today is 30, uh, we, we, I think we broke, we just broke 30,000. Yes, we went to 29,000. 994. So we're a little bit above that at 30,058. And to, to tell you the truth, it's more a psychological thing for me than for most people. I mean, the majority of people, if you had to say to them, oh, what, 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 what are we close to in the Dow? They said, the Dow, I don't know. They wouldn't know what the Dow is doing. So um, that's the way I look at it. And now what I'm saying to me is that in the context of the arch formation, remember in the Chapman methodology, one of the patterns that we look at, and actually one of the patterns that is extremely important in the uh, three waveforms that I look at all the time, straight line up, straight line down, that's one. Cup formation, that's two. Arch formation, that's three, or a mix of one and two, or one and three. And in this particular case, one and three is straight line down, then the arch formation fails at a peak A or a B, second peak or the first peak, takes out the left side low, and you can get a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside, which is kind of what we've just done. Look, 31,182 was the low September around the 6th. We spiked up within four days up to the 32,500s. And we, yeah, we are. We took it out. You know, my rule of thumb with the dreaded H pattern, we call it dreaded H because if it takes out the left side low, it can go a lot lower. Well, we took it out, and we basically got ourselves a one to one to the downside. So everything's pointing to this 30,000 level, at least on a very near-term basis, as being important. And it's one of the reasons why for subscribers to my opening call, we've raised a huge, one of the one of the largest cash positions we've had in a long time. Yes, we're trying, uh, you know, we, we try to go in for a very low price stock, single digit or just a very low double digit. As a trade, if it works, it should work very well. If it doesn't, it's going to take you out right away, and we're out. We're out. So I'm treating this right now as a feeler moment where stocks that are under the radar that have the potential to do something, I'll give them a chance, but that's about it. And a, qu a qu question came in uh, saying that um, you, it sounded like... Uh, uh, you sound bullish. Well, I don't know how I can actually sound bullish when we've raised this kind of cash. We are still short the Dow from right there, uh, right there. And that was around about the 22nd of August at about 33,300s. And we remain short that position. But within that, we can have 1% or 1.5% uh, trades to try to see if we can trade the diamonds. We've had some really good trades in the diamonds. Um, but I, 
at this particular point, they are merely near-term trades. That's all they are. And um, almost like feeler to get a sense of whether the support level has held or hasn't held. So within that context, let's just run this and, and say, these are the parameters that I'll be watching coming into next week. We are extremely oversold, both on a technical level and an emotional level, and um, in terms of the fundamentals, as we look at it with the, the Fed, a near-term oversold condition. Not looking out, that still says we should, we, still, we should still test and maybe even break the June low. We don't know yet because we've come down very far. Look at the arch formation in the S&P. Uh, the June low was at uh, 30, was that 36, 36? I can't remember now. Uh, yeah, 36, 36.87. We're at 37.66. So we're, we're substantially higher, but things can happen very quickly. And you know my my uh, contention, when key support level, especially the inside track support level is taken out, as it has in this weekly chart, you've got to be careful because there's a chance that you're now in play, especially after your peak B, if it becomes a peak B minus, with a dreaded H pattern. So, no, we, we are very cautious. Looking out, I'm still saying that uh, when you consider this is the ninth month now, since the highs were made in January, the monthly chart is actually looking, still looking pretty decent, but that's at this very moment at 10, 12 a.m. Eastern time on the 22nd of September. I might say something completely different next week this time because we're starting to wrap up the month of September. That goes to the Friday. Oh, a Friday close on the month. Whew, that's interesting. Why? Because if just before the end of the month there's a huge decline, it means you start off the following month with a big dip. You're already underneath the left side uh, low of importance. So anyway, we're going to be watching this. Uh, I don't know what there is that's going to make the market turn around and say, hey, 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 I, I want to I rally in the Dow uh, 1,500 or 1,600 points. In the S&P, I want to rally 150 to 200 points. I just don't know what's going to trigger it, but I do see a uh, very short-term, very oversold conditions saying there could be a surprise to the upside in both price and time if we're able to have a decent close on Friday, <laughs> that's tomorrow at 4 o'clock. But in the meantime, on a very short-term basis, I wanted to show you this because I drawn it in. I showed it for those of you in Tiger, uh, for those of you in the Tiger Den, not Tiger YouTube, but the Tiger Den, you would have seen me drawing where is it? It's the E-mini one-minute chart that had four tests of the inside track support level, and it should be coming off it right now. So here we are, look. There's, that's where it starts in the one-minute chart. I'll just tell you where it is. It's at 9.46 at the low of 37.78.25. And what I've drawn in is a chapter made inside track propellant zone, and it's worked. It's gone one, two, three, beautiful symmetry in time. And this fourth one had three, four clusters right underneath the green line, and now it's taken off, and we're having a beautiful leg C. And I, I didn't have time. Oh, I wish I had the time. I should have done this. I would have drawn the left side, right side, time price match. Because all day, you'll be shocked if you see this chart. I'll show you it when we get back. How this arch and cup formation is just looks so beautiful. I'll be Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIVC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, Basil Stafford here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour. And we're just seeing, the, remember two fighting patterns always, the cup and the arch, holding nicely on the nine period moving average. Needs, uh, I would say by, what are we, 10 to 18 right now, I need by 20, uh, at least by 10, 24, to be tackling 37.98 on the E-mini. Because if it breaks under 37.80, you're going back to that arch formation. So all right, I want to just show you that this pattern has been very consistent. Look at this going backwards. Look at this beautiful cup formation and a beautiful arch formation. Uh, just rotating all the time, huge cup formation that was at about 7 o'clock from the 38-14 uh, area down to 37.92 and then back up again, peak G and then pull back. So this is a pattern that's has been uh, rotating all day. Now, for this to become a cup formation, uh, moving below the 37.82.81 area says, uh, uh you're going to have to wait a little while longer. It has to rebuild strength. This might have been a little too soon at 10.20, maybe if it was 10.40 this morning, and we suddenly saw this the rally that we, we uh, witnessed there from 37.70 up to 3.37.95. Uh, a little later, that would have uh, been, I would have preferred that. But right now, it says, it just keeps, oh, we've got um, Bill and, oh, we've got Bill on the line. Bill, are you there? Am I correct? Uh, is that today? Bill and San Juan? I was hoping I'd hear from Bill because we were very worried about, um, we were very worried about uh, with San Juan just getting wiped out again. Um, and I was thinking of Bill. I don't know. Is this is this current? I, I have the phone line turned all the way up. Oh, I, I can't. Bill. Oh, SBI. I think that's what he got. Let me just check if that's a, a symbol. Maybe you can hear me, but you can't talk. Uh, let me just see. SPI. That would be one of yours. At 1.65, it's at 1.65 right now. Um, so, uh, Bill, I, I know you're still on the line. Al's got you there. 
but he can't hear you. So if anything happens, just keep talking and say, I'm on, I'm here and I'll stop talking. But I, you want to look at SPI and SPI is SPI Energy Company. Now, my big problem with an energy company that's trading down to $1.72 is the big question that I have. How on earth would an energy company not be really garnering good strength um, and holding it? It's had good strength before from 158 way right back in um, July and screamed up to the 237 level. I mean, that's a wonderful percentage, but then it gave it all back and now it's kind of flat. So um, I'm just going to guess. My, my suspicion is that you're all long and uh, you have some long positions or maybe one position. And what I'm looking at here is when the price is flat like this and it keeps coming back to test the lows, as long as it doesn't take out that left side low, in this case, the low of the uh, 7th of July of 1.58, it says that it's trying to form a key level of support. And at some point, if it's able to break above the rectangle that it forms, for instance, this would be a peak A right here, right there. That is around about the 8th or so uh, of September. But this is also a peak A, and then it made a lower low, but it hasn't taken out the original one. Now, what's interesting is this is an A, and that is a B. So it's already at a, a stage B in the uh, – I can't really put an up arrow. I can just put in a, a plus sign to say, okay, this is your low that you're watching very closely. This is a 1.58, and it's trading 1.65. I love when price keeps coming back, keeps coming back, doesn't take out the left side low. If it takes out the left side low, you have to restart the whole thing all over again. But if it's able at $1.58, um, it can hold that all the way through to, say, Monday or Tuesday. And at that time, I'm not sure why it's so deeply down today, almost 3%, down 0.05 at 165. I would have preferred if right now I was looking at it at 168 or 171, I'd say, wow, that I, that's, that I like. So this is a little tricky. Most importantly, what you want to see, especially based on the weekly chart, because the weekly chart goes back even further, having held the low of 1.51 that was made the week of the 13th of May this year. And it's already screamed up to the 235 to 240 area. So that's, once again, it's forming a base. And the base so far has been strict. It's, it's stuck to the rules. And the latest rule is 158 support. And it's done that even on three days ago when it pulled back, it went to 158. And 158 is the low of the seventh. It hasn't taken it out. So that's just the key to me. If it takes it out, you kind of have to start again. Um, but I think you're looking at it with a little bit of a fundamental uh, aspect to it. So I'm just going to do it purely on a technical basis. And what I'm going to say is if it closes under 150, no, if it goes under 158 by one penny, you have to kind of restart the whole wave count. It's nice that it's at a leg B. If by Friday is a little too soon, let's say by Monday it hasn't taken out 158, but in fact what it's doing is getting closer to 172, let's just say tomorrow's an inside day. There isn't a new recovery high above 176. But on Monday, it goes to 178. That's the action you want. And that's the action that should go very quickly to the high that was made on the 9th of September at 1.84. So I hope that helps you. I just want to look at ADTX. I'm doing this by memory. I'm sure that's the correct symbol. That was your stock that you spoke about the other day. And, and, and then it did a um, 50 to 1 or something split to the upside, and it, sc it screamed to the 28.49 um, level on the 14th, and now it's trading at $3.54. So you, I, you know these better than I do because you, you trade them a lot. But just be really careful um, that the support, in other words, for your uh, SPI, that support isn't taken out because if it goes to the 155 level, that's a that's that's really that's a problem because it's taken out all the recent supports. But it does say that it's holding above the major low of the 13th week of the 13th of May of 151. So just be real careful. But uh, you you understand these and you're understanding that it is a, a very speculative. 
but I think you've done your homework if you are in it. Okay, so I hope that helps you. I'm sorry we couldn't speak, and um, let's, uh, let's just say maybe tomorrow you'll be able to get through and I'll be able to hear you. And I'm just so pleased that you're able to call, that you're on the phone, because I was very worried about you over the weekend. I thought, oh, man, uh, San Juan's just getting blasted. But anyway, best of luck to you. Now, a couple of things I want to look at here. Um, questions have come in. Yes, I understand the Elliott Wave, for some people, is working in this particular environment. I, I'm really pleased about Remember, I don't dismiss these. these uh, I, the reason why I had Chapman Wave Notation as peak A, peak B, etc. was because at the time that I was doing this a lot and more publicly, um, uh, Elliott Wave was being promulgated by Tractor, and I just didn't want to be mixed with that. It's something completely different to Elliott Wave. That's all. All right, I'll be back. Dow's down 81, SP's down 21, and we'll get back to our E Mini in a moment. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I'm back, and then in the den there's been discussions about silences, cassava sites, it's biotech, Alzheimer's, etc. Made a high of 146.60 in July of 2021, and then had a little bit of a dip down to the 15, 14, 15 area. Uh, we're looking at, that was the low of 13.84 uh, on the 27th. So you're looking at a stock 13 points, what did I say, it was 13 point 34, I think I said. And uh, I would say the 13.34 to today's high of 42.41, up 4.74. That's a pretty decent gain, lay D after that big rectangle formation. Uh, very nice move to the upside, leg B in the weekly chart. But then monthly chart is still, uh, wow, that is, uh, 
<laughs> we'll see if you're going to get a green candle in September that actually holds all the way through to the end of the month as a green candle instead of giving it back as a long wick. But so far, everything seems to be working. And Dan, the Dan has been talking about uh, the uh, both the pros and the cons, but also the fact that I believe that there was insider buying. Well, you know what's interesting? Insider selling can always be for many, many reasons. But an insider buy, it is very seldom that I can recall that insiders, the, from what I've read, that insiders have bought uh because the stock is just so low. They've usually bought because there are other things going on and it's just very attractive for them and the, the, that's the insiders and their portfolio to make this not as a perfect timing. They don't want a perfect timing because then you get all these regulations coming in. They just want it as a nice entry point. But this is a little different because uh, we are looking at a stock that was – once in the, yeah, it was an IPO, it was obviously in the single digits, screams up to 146 and then gives back what almost 90% down to the 13 area, 90%, and now is up uh, a fourfold increase, almost a fourfold increase. This is very impressive, and it is a biotech. And what we've been looking at for the past couple of months actually is that in the biotech sector, if you go to the IBB, which is the big, this is the big daddy, this is a, whatever you'd call a big honcher, IBB, NASDAQ, Biotech, ETF, uh, coming back from the 170s to the to the 105-ish area and then rallying, uh, that's that's a big move down. So it's not the, 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 the big caps that are really doing it. It's these little, it's the micro caps. And this was basically when it was in the 15s was kind of a micro cap. So I've been following this very closely. We don't have anything right now, but periodically I will be looking at uh, what I call the, the micro. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a term that I should really call it. I'm just saying that the price in the uh, single digits is a micro price com compared to sometimes where they were. And that makes it very attractive. And a lot of them have been moving very well. So now you've got to separate. Let's go to like an Amgen. An Amgen, I was asked about yesterday, and I forgot to look at it, had a horrible session today. It's a very nice session, up 2.56 to 227.02. There's that rectangle uh, formation that I talk about, uh, which says that you can really have an arch formation going just about two, just under, or just a little over the previous high. In this case, it was the peak D high of the 15th, the week of the 15th of April, of this year, 258.45, plummets down to the 220s and then screams back up in a V-shaped pattern to 257.95. 257.95, that's it's like a half a point away. And then it gives it back and makes another arch formation. This is the pattern, the dreaded H pattern right there. And the rule of thumb is if it takes out that left side low, you've got to be careful because what was once support, this horizontal line in the 220s, 226 area, is now very strong. It could become very strong resistance. This is a weekly chart, so we haven't even got a week close, a weekly close underneath that left side low, but it does look quite poor. And if you're looking at the Amgen Biofarm, if you're looking at the monthly chart, it made one dreaded H pattern right there. Let me just draw it in because it's not technical Friday, it's technical Thursday. So we've got a little pattern here that's gone to the H pattern. And then a much bigger one right here, which says there's a chance that you're making an even larger arch formation. So within those parameters, um, I need to look at what happens sometimes in weekly and monthly charts. So the weekly chart basically for Amgen was sitting in a, a very nice horizontal trading band. Now it's underneath it, but we've got tomorrow to go, another day to go to see whether it closes above the low that was made of 227.32 the week of the 6th of May. We're right there right now. We're at 2 uh, we're at uh, 226.78. We we kind of testing it. And then the monthly. Well, I like to look at time frames. So the time frame in the data says sell signal to sell mode. The weekly time says now we've got a sell signal and we'll wait for tomorrow, but there's a good chance it's going to be upgraded to a sell mode. 
And the monthly chart is still trading within the bigger band, the two 270s to the 190s. Um, it's been up to the two, 257 area, and now it's at 226. But the technicals are starting to weaken. So this one has to be monitored. So there isn't, a, other than to say there's a sell signal in the monthly chart, technically I should say there's a sell mode, but that big rally kind of negated the mode part of it. Uh, when it was to that great peak A uh, back in, I think it was April, maybe. Yeah, April, it went to 258.45. So I'm watching this closely. So I'm just trying to give you a sense of what's important when we've got a week to go from tomorrow for the end of the month. Is that right? Is that the end of the month next week? It is. Oh, it is. Uh, 23. Yeah, it is. So um, let's go to the S&P because that was a question. And the question is, uh, how, how was it put? Uh, in terms of the Chapman wave, uh, I'll just get to the question because it, it's, a, it's a pertinent question. I don't like to dismiss these things. That, eh. um, okay, there it is. So... Yes. So looking at the um, looking at the weekly and monthly charts, if you can't give targets to the downside or the upside, then where does the Chapman wave stand? Well, I'm not the price. Remember, I'm just following the chart. So it's got a peak B. The, the S&P weekly has got a peak B. It's arching over. The technicals are starting to fail. It's suggesting that there is a chance that we're going to test the left side low of 36.36. Um, and if it takes that out, not only does it impact the weekly chart, that absolutely will impact the monthly chart. And I don't care whether it's a peak B or not. Every every other, and this is what the, this is what I've been talking about for months, months since. Uh, February, actually, that all the other indices, look, peak E in the monthly chart of the of the Dow, QQQ, peak G slash C, uh, IWM, peak D. So all XLK, I can just go through one after the other. And it's, it's very unusual, peak D in the XLK, the S&P Select Tiger Spider Fund, SMHs. So... That's very clear. Peak G in the SMH of 318.69 double top. So those are very clear. It also says that it is extremely unusual. Now, if I go to the S&P, the different uh, S&P, the value S&P, most of those are at a peak B or C in the monthly charts. Does that mean that it can fail? Do you realize that for the S&P to actually fail, in the Chapman Wave methodology, it has to have as, as one single move down below 2191.86, the March low. I, that's, that, that's a broad parameter. So I just keep doing what I'm doing. I'll be back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. We're back. We're back. We're looking at EOG resources. The question by Jack in the Den. Uh, what do I think of it? Well, it's in this area. Well, first of all, EOG Resources has gone from under 20 back in 2020, screams up to 140, and then pulls back. But it's pulled back pretty reasonably. So in this pattern right here in the daily chart, it went to a peak D, the MACD pullback, stochastic pullback. But the nine-period moving average has held beautifully. Then it went to a peak E at 120. Yeah, 128.17 on the 19th, and now it's trading at 119.63. So my impression here is with many of the resource stocks is that they are in play as a sector. The individual stocks are just real choppy at this particular time, really taking a breather. Oh, look at this after this peak D and the huge red candle from, that was four months ago, so that was in June. 144.69 high, 103.46. So that's, I mean, that's huge. And then it went even lower under the 14 period moving average. Now, not only is it above the 14, but above the green nine period moving average. So it's in play. I like it. If you're in this as a long term position, I would hate for me to say, hey, I would take, I'd, I'd, I'd be careful because if it breaks 112, it can quickly go to 107. This is one of those stocks that could start a rather choppy trading range, but every couple of weeks, there'll just be enough of a response through the, through the resources, through the demand, that it keeps popping back. My question at this particular point for myself is, what would take it over the high that was made at 128.17 on the 14th of uh, September, so that not only this is a leg A, leg B, this is a leg C. If it doesn't happen the next two days, I don't think it's going to. It'll happen next week. That takes it to leg D underneath the previous doji candle high of uh, the week of the 10th of June at 144.69. So this is a long way to say. I Now, I, for those of you who know my work, I would very often grab the outside of this little doji candle right here, go across like that and say, hey, this is almost, almost like the oval pattern in the stalk leg formation. Now, it's not good enough for me to say that it is because it's a little too choppy for that. But it does have almost like a, a diamond pattern or an oval pattern. And that just says very clearly that if there is a close below 114 point, a close, not just going under, but a close under 114.06, the low of the 7th of September, there's a really good chance that it could go into this digestive mode and maybe touch the 200 period one more time between 110 and 107. So 107.77 is the 200 period moving average support. But I've seen patterns like this stay 
like this for a little while, even have a little spike to another high, this would make it like a leg F, and then come back and maybe even take out that. So I think EOG is in play, but if you had to say to me right now, would you buy it, would you sell it, would you hold it, would you just step aside? I would say to you that it's in a trading band that it might bounce a little bit, but the whole idea of 119 at this particular point looks like a magnet that even if it pulls back, it's going to retest that. So I'm just, I would just wait. If you are long, but you're long from quite a bit down, I would say I wouldn't touch it. If you're a little nervous, maybe take a tad off, but I think it's holding well, and I think it's still in play as a resource. Now, I can't remember specifically which resource it is, but I... I just like this pattern, especially the weekly chart is holding nicely above the nine period moving average. Uh, the MACD is not great, but good. The stochastic is rallying at 61%, not great, but it's okay. I think it's in play. So I I would like to look at it a week from, no, I'd like to look at next Tuesday because that's going to tell me in the pattern if, because if it closes under the low that was made of the 19th of 117.01, there's a really good chance it's going to test the doji candle, um, that 115, 114 area. And if it closes nicely above yesterday's high, it says, hey, it's working its way high. But I'm just saying, I don't think it's in, ah, that's what I wanted to say. I don't think it's in play for the big move, either up or down at this particular point. Whew. Sorry, took a little bit of a, a roundabout way to say it. Okay, next thing is, uh, so the pattern that I wanted to show you right here, this is the E-mini. Look what happened. Within the peak C that was made right there on this one-minute candle, underneath the 200 period moving average, it's not got close enough to the 200 period moving average for it to become a magnet, at 37.95, it pulled back, it held a, uh, a Fibonacci support level, and then it used that as a magnet. And then what did it do? It added, remember the Chapman methodology, what are we always looking for? We're looking from the lowest, most identifiable low bar to count each successively higher peak, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. The fourth highest peak is where other things can happen. It can go all the way to E, F, and G, but a D is your objective, a buy signal to a buy mode. Well, lo and behold, it got to a peak D, now it's pulling back and it's trying to create this arch formation right here. And what I'd said in the den is that unless the E-mini at any point today can start to trade for 20 minutes above 38.08, and it's just kind of stuck in this range for now. And that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. Uh, so that's what I wanted to show you. So you see this particular pattern where you can get a Chapman buy signal to buy mode with underneath the previous high. Have a look at this. Here's Qualcomm. I've got a whole bunch of these that I've been meaning. Maybe tomorrow I'll do that. That I've been meaning to talk about because yeah, so many people do use the Chapman Wave methodology. Um, look at this. There's a screamer. It goes from the 117-ish area back in June. And it goes peak A. Pulls back sharply. Gaps up. Goes to peak B. Then it goes to above the 200 p moving average to peak C, and then it kind of stalls and stalls and stalls, and then it makes a low at about 140, and then what does it do? It goes peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, and even a peak E, all within a very small trading range underneath the previous peak C. This is the one that counts, and now look what's happened. From the 150s, it's down to today's low of 123. So that's exact. This is what we were. Oh, I don't know if that's going to be repeated today. Is that going to be repeated today? So you had your peak C in the one minute chart of the E mini, and there's your peak A, B, C, D very quickly, and now it's starting to pull back. Uh, all I can say is that if at any point this afternoon, or well, it doesn't have to be this afternoon, any point from now on, if the E mini starts to trade for 20 minutes under 37.68, that's going to be very poor action. I just see enough buying coming in that I think the bias right now is just to kind of lean a little bit to the upside. It won't trigger big, big moves until uh, we're at 10, uh, 49 a.m. Eastern time. It won't trigger big moves. Let's just look at the volatility index. The volatility index has been all over the show lately. Yep, there it is. It's just gone to a new, oh, would it be, would it be do this? Is it a new leg C to the upside? It's trading at 27.84, down 15 cents, and the market is actually down, and yet the uh, volatility index is down. And it had the same same thing, four times hit, Chapman inside bar, five times hit, inside track, and then it pulled back. 
So that makes it very important to move above 28.33. Today's high is 28.38. A move above 28. Uh, did I say 28? No, wait, something's wrong. Oh, that's today. That was yesterday, yes. A move above 28.38 will suggest very strongly that the market will pull back. And any move below 27.32 says, aha, finally a little bit of buying up here. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Yeah, just to be clear, oh, I haven't typed in an IC. The EOG resources, that is oil and natural gas exploration. Well, we had one, which was absolutely fabulous to us, that we, we didn't take make as much money as we should have, which was CF Industries, hydrogen, nitrogen products, etc., And it's pulled back. It's a different pattern. I'm not yet ready to get back into this. This is different. And the other question I just had moments ago was Mosaic. This is potash phosphate fertilizers. The Mosaic company, MOS, is a symbol trading at 53.35 down 15 cents. See, it looks very much like CF. So they all in... The difference is that EOG was holding a lot better. Now what we're looking at is the MOS, the, the whole area of the phosphates. This is different. This is not a great pattern. It looks like the 200-period moving average of 51 has to be tested. Then maybe it starts to build some strength. So unless uh, MOS is tra able to trade close on a, on a two-day basis above 56.40, it's at 53.28 uh, right now. It's just kind of stuck in this range. So I just have to say, please be careful out there. Raising cash was very important to us. We've got a big cash position. If we have any trades, we just put them on and 
it either works immediately or it doesn't. I'm just not interested in holding anything that has the potential to pull back more than just a couple of percentage points. I don't want to sit here with a 15 to 20 percent loss on something that I, I believe will go higher. No, I will not do that. So just once again, be careful um, within my, my uh, opening call, my daily newsletter. As I say, we have some core positions. We still have that DBA, and that DBA is the DBA Agricultural Fund. See, it's pulling back a little bit in a trading band because the grains are holding well, but they're not they're not breaking out right now, but they're not breaking down. So just be very, very careful. And with that said, don't forget going to Steve Rose. You've got a great program here at TFN all day. Don't forget we start off at 9 with Tommy O'Brien and his market kickoff. He does a fabulous job and terrific interviews. Don't forget to be here at 9 o'clock every morning for 4 o'clock. Tom O'Brien wraps it up. Have a great day. Gals down uh, 65, 85. It's struggling over.